back in the max. And the reason I want to make it a little browner is to better match the brown that's in that uh, texture here of the sun. I don't want it the same colour because otherwise it's going to get lost, but I want it to be browner and not as red as the cherry wood. Let's uh, work on this Z fighting a little bit. You see what's happening here? That's because there's polys too close to each other. So let's make sure that our, um, our objects are positioned properly. Yeah, there is some Z fighting, yep. <laughs> there certainly is Z fighting, that, that's what I'm looking at now. There's a few way, ways we can uh, correct that. We can start by probably removing the polygons from the back edge here, so I'm going to isolate that sun image jump around to the back. Again, we don't see any of this, so we can uh, remove all of the polygons on the back. See, I want to make sure I have um, ignore back facing turned on, otherwise I may select ones from the front by mistake. zoom around to the front to make sure I don't have any there selected and I'm going to delete these ones from the back. Uh, looks like we have a couple here we can get rid of too. And we have one up here. <laughs> there you know, good catch sniper echo. That, like I said, that, those problems are always Z fighting. We were completely removed the polygons from the back. We've only got the ones at the front. Let's uh, exit isolation mode, reselect our steps and jump back into isolation mode. We still have some Z fighting so we're going to have to um, look at what's going on here. And again though, the Z fighting we're seeing in the viewport may still not be a problem in um, Unreal. Max's viewports sometimes can be a bit weird. Uh, uh, uh. As you can see there with the rotation, it gets a bit strange in Max sometimes. We have Z fighting or we're looking at it from back here. But you'll notice when I get closer to the object, we actually don't have so much. We still have a bit though. So what, what? Wrong woman. So, so, so. There are a few ways we can fix this. We can... I don't really want to push the object here further back or pull it too far forward because I want to keep my frame up in front of it. This panel frame. So what I can do though is bring the panel frame forward. So have to be careful I don't bring it too far forward. I still want it to be hitting the back edge there. Okay. And we can uh, do a scale here on this to bring it back a little bit. We'll 
pull it forward. Seems to have fixed our Z fighting problem. And again, for anyone not new that might be confused as to what Z Z fighting actually is, it's two polygons that are laying too close to each other, and they're fighting to get the attention of the uh, program or whatever it is. But it's just basically two polygons that are uh, ne right next to each other that are too close. And to fix that, you generally either move them further apart or you remove one of the polygons. We did both. We um, removed the polygons from the back and we we pulled, uh, we moved it further apart as well. Um, now, the only thing I'm not really sold on here now is the new wood color that we've put in. I just want to change that up a bit. Uh, again, it's it's difficult. We really shouldn't be looking at the, that texture in Max here because Max is not using the uh, roughness or the occlusion map or the normal map, and the color it, we're, we're seeing here in Max is not really representative of what it's going to look like in Unreal. As you can see, the difference in color here between Substance Painter and Max's viewport. Uh, you've also got to make sure if you change the texture in Max that it does reload the texture for you because it has a habit of not doing that. Looks like it has. But yeah, the colour I'm seeing here in Max I don't really like, but it's probably better for me to look at the colour in Substance Painter because that's more like it, it's going to be in um, Unreal. But let's uh, just change it up just a little bit more going to make it a little darker. We'll do one more export here. Um, actually, might change the generator as well. I'm just pulling back on that dirt level a little bit. And pulling back a bit on the dirt contrast. And I'm going to pull back on the grunge amount as well. Yeah, yeah, so, so Sniper Echo is saying, yeah, there's quite a difference in the texture between Max and uh, Substance Painter. That's, that's right. If you're working in Substance Painter and you're taking a model into, um, into Unreal, say, or Unity. Um, work on the color you see here in, in, the, in Substance Painter, more so than if you're working in Max and looking at the color you're seeing in Max. I'm just going to export this uh, texture that we just changed slightly again. Make sure we save our file here because we don't want to lose anything. Jump back into Max. Again, I'm going to make sure Max is actually loading up that changed texture. There we go. And you see the color difference though in Max. Max is making it look a lot browner, a lighter brown than it actually is. It's a much darker brown when we see it in Substance. And uh, it's, it's a So we have that uh, side panelling done. I'm just deciding whether I like the um, sun motif in there or not. If, when we bring it into Unreal, if we decide we don't like it, it's easy, particularly considering it's a separate object, it's going to be easy for us to remove it if we don't want it there and, add, and change it up a bit if we want to. So you're not locked into anything when you're doing this. You can always change your mind after you get it in and uh, decide you don't like it. I, I like the sun motif on, and I wanted to add more interest to the main stairwell uh, because it is a feature in that room. But let's um, 
maybe look at the steps because the steps need work as well. I'm just going to deselect the sun there so I can have a bit better look at it from a distance. Yeah, I don't know. Uh, what, what do you <clears throat> what do you mean, Sniper Echo? That um, in, oh, you, you're talking about the difference in color between substance and um, max. Uh, if that's what you mean, if you mean it's it must be difficult if the colors are different between substance and if you're doing a render in max using substances. Um, what you should be doing if you're using max to render in substances, max has built-in support for substance, for a substance shader. Uh, so you see down here that can you see that? Yeah, good. There's a, a a material called substance. That's what I really should be using instead of using a standard shader. So if if you're working in Substance Painter and you make your material, yeah, he means the color difference. Yep. So just add for you guys that are interested, if you're working in Substance, you're making a Substance material here. You've got your colors all right. You you're happy with what you've done. You want to take that into Max and render it in Max's view using Max's rendering tools. You don't use a standard shader like I am. I'm only using a standard shader because I want to get an approximation of what it's going to look like in Unreal. You'd use the substance shader here that's actually built into Max. And it's, it's built in, it's made just for substance materials, so yeah. I didn't really go into that because, um, yeah, I'm not going to be doing any rendering using substances. I'm, working with the unreal here but it is worthwhile pointing out if you do if you are using substances in max use the substance shader that you see here don't use a standard shader that i'm like i am i'm only doing it like i said so i can get a general idea of what it's going to look like prior to me taking it into unreal and that will fix that problem for you you'll get your proper coloring then um, I, I, another reason I can't use a substance here though is it'll cause problems when I do my export to bring it into Unreal. This is unique to, this shader is for Max, not for, um, not to export your model to another program. Uh, that's why I always tend to stick with a standard color here in Max. If I'm doing an export to Unreal, I don't use substance shaders. But you see, if, you, if I double click on the substance shader, you do have access to a, quite a few parameters here in um, in sub in Max for your substance. So, and I actually still haven't played with Max 2018. I really must get around to uh, having a bit of a play around with that too. See if the program is more stable than 2017 was. They tend to work in 2016 all the time because I know it's uh, a good workhorse and doesn't fail. 2017, as you guys know, I couldn't run on my machine because it kept crashing the PC. Uh, and I haven't been game yet to try 2018 for an extended period of time to see if it does the same thing. I, I, I've got to though. Um, I'm still not sold on that sun though, looking at it from a distance. I really don't know about that. Yeah, I'm not sure about that at all. Uh, you're going to ask me about 2018 Sniper Echo? Yeah, I do have it installed. I'm still using 2016 here. Um, <clears throat> I'm really not game to... I've, I've got to test it. I do. The studio will want to know. Uh, they generally come to me to do any testing for the software before they put it into the pipeline. Um, and that's the reason... Well, one of the reasons I have access to it is because of the studio. Uh, you can only use 2018, access 2018 now on subscription. You have to have a max subscription, but you pay monthly like, you know, Adobe's subscription for their software. Uh, otherwise, I wouldn't be using it at all, but um, I, I will have to test it out. Uh, they're using a new, a new uh, viewport now called QT5, I think. Uh, it used to be like a nitrous viewport, but they've updated all of that to make it more like Maya now because Maya uses, I think it's a QT5 uh, interface as well. It's a programming thing that they're using for the uh, viewport now. 
and it is supposed to be very good. It's supposed to speed up Macs quite a bit. Uh, and I'm all, I always like using new versions of Macs. I just, after 2017 and the problems I have with that, and I can handle it if the program crashes. That's not a problem. If I'm using it and the program just crashes to the desktop, okay, fine. I can reopen it quickly, but the problem is, with 2017, it wouldn't crash to the desktop. It would freeze my entire PC. And the only way I could get out of it was to actually hit the power button on the computer to switch it off and turn it back on. And as you guys know, I always have a lot of programs running in the background here. Uh, and I lose all of that work if I have to completely reboot my machine because I can't do anything because Max has locked up my entire computer. So that's a serious problem. Like I said, I can handle a crash. A crash, a program crashing is fine if it only crashes that program. But Max was freezing up everything. And the only way to get out of it, not even a control or delete in Windows would work. Nothing would work. The only way to fix it was to turn the machine off and on. And I'd I end up losing any work I was doing in uh, other programs. So yeah, and I'm not the only one. A lot of people, if you go to Autodesk Forum, they're all complaining about 2017 and there's still a few complaining about 2018. That's is why I'm just a bit hesitant to jump into using it. Saying that it still has problems like 2017 did. Um, that may be true or it may just be a, a few people having problems like that. I don't know, I've got to test. And we have the new version of Windows now, the Creators Update or Creative Update, I can never remember what they're calling it. Uh, and there was a cumulative update yesterday for Windows 10, so I haven't tested it in the new version. I really should. I actually did update my version of Vue as well. I'm using Vue. I'll be using Vue 2016 now for uh, any other work when we start doing more projects in Vue on stream. It's pretty much the same as 2016. Uh, I've had a quick play around with it. There's a few, few new things. I've got path tracing and stuff in it now, which is like... Uh, real-time rendering sort of if you if you if you're familiar with V-Ray's RT real-time renderer it's the same sort of thing um, or Arnold I think have one too they all seem to have one but it, it's pretty limited you can't it doesn't render out all ecosystems it doesn't do clouds it's it needs a lot more work but that's the new thing in Vue 2016 they're path tracing I think they're calling it and it just behaves, it's a bit snappier now, Vue 2016 and Vue 2015. I've also gone up from Vue 9 to Vue 10 now, so any models that I put online on Cornucopia, they used to be compatible all the way down to version 9. They're going to, only going to be compatible down, down to version 10. So every time they update the program to a new version each year, I up the minimum that people can use for my models in the program. So it's gone from version 9 now to version 10. Just for anyone interested that uh, uses Vue and buys stuff from Cornucopia, my models anyway, uh, anything new now, you'll have to have version 10 or higher of Vue to use any of my models. All right, uh, getting back to this stairwell though, I'm really not sold on this. Uh, really, 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 really not. I wonder if it's because the cherry wood here in the background is too bright. Yeah, let's look at that. Let's jump into substance and let's load up that um, main stair side piece here. Let's swap the color, let's change the color here of the, um, of the wood in the background. We're going to do the same thing. I'm going to make it darker. And we're going to export the uh, texture map again, make sure it's in the right folder, yeah. Okay. The darker texture I prefer. I still don't know if I like the sun though. The sun motif there. Let's just jump uh, into my reference images here that I looked at for what we were going to be doing. Uh, UE4 projects. Models. Reference. 
There we go. Just going to close these down so that we're not inundated with um, dialogue boxes here. We decided to go with this. No, I remember, remember, guys, when I started making it, I said I'm not sure if we're going to be able to use it because I don't know if I'm really going to like it. Uh, and I was tending more to just to this very simple design in this corner here. And I'm, I'm still thinking more along those lines now. Because, yeah, while the sun motif is, makes a really nice statement, it's just not right, I don't think, for the step. Um, I'm just going to move it out of the way. What I'm going to do is I'm going to save my max file here in case I change my mind. And we can use this somewhere else in the level anyway. It's, it's not wasted work. Uh, we created that sun motif and we can use that on another part of the geometry somewhere else in the uh, building. I just don't really like it for the steps. I just don't think it's quite right. Um, yeah. But we have to do something with the... Uh, I want to add a bit more interest to this panelling on, on the underneath the steps here. So I'm thinking we may just go with something a little simpler like that pattern that's going on in the corner here. Um, remember guys, like I say, less is always more and that sun, yeah, was just not right. I, I didn't really know. I had a feeling it wouldn't be, but it, until I actually got it in place and saw it to decide it really wasn't right. Let's see if we can create that uh, simple design we saw there in the uh, reference image. Then it is really simple. It's like uh, two boxes on top of each other. We should be able to do that pretty quickly and easily here. So we'll make one box. And the second one. Oh, let me just jump back in quickly. Second one is bigger, okay. And the second box here. Alright, let's um, play with our shapes here a little bit. We'll do an edit poly. Oh. Uh, we'll do a vertex here and I'm going to... Now again, I, I thought this was going on. I, d I don't want this many segments in my um, boxes. I only want them as one segment. We made them uh, three segments when we were doing the background there. Alright, now we can do an edit poly and go into vertex mode. I'm going to do a scale out here. And we're going to do the same thing with uh, this one here. We'll just scale them out a bit. And it's really that simple <laughs> to get that shape. Because uh, again, anything to do with Art Deco is all geometric forms. Uh, there's very little, um, unlike that Baroque Garden Terrace we worked on where there were angels and swirls and that Art Deco is all geometry, clean lines, uh, straight edges, geometric forms. So it's really quite uh, easy, well I'd say easy to model, but easier to model, put it that way. Um, I'm just going to pull these out a little bit more. There we go. Let me just get into my viewport here so I can see where those pieces are. Where are they? There they are. Alright, we can adjust the uh, the height of them after the fact. I'm just going to look at them here in my orthographic. Uh, now, I'm not going to soften the edges on these because I'm, I'm going to make them quite small. I do want to texture them up though, so I'm going to just make sure that they're both attached together. Uh, we do have to do an unwrap before we can take it into substance to uh, texture them, so we'll do that. Again, we'll just do a, um, a flatten mapping. 
that'll be fine. Okay, we're going to call it uh, Deco Corners. And we'll export it as an FBX so we can take it into Substance Painter. Uh, we'll export it into our Panels folder, I think. Okay, let's jump back into Substance Painter. Let's just save that project there before we create a new one. So load up that FBX we just exported. <laughs> and I put a V in there, I've just noticed instead of uh, by mistake, but that doesn't matter. Deck bow corners, I think I'm calling it. All right, let's just pull back a little bit here. Uh, again, let's throw down our, our cherry wood smart material, but I'm going to change the color on it. We'll just give Substance a minute there to work that out. Okay, let's um, just play with the scaling a little bit. Because this is going to be quite a small piece of wood. I don't want the scaling to be too high. I do want to change the color though. I want to pull in much, make it much darker, much darker. I'm going to um, pull back on the uh, grunge as well. Just add a bit of. Um, we may just paint in a little bit of, of a difference here, as well using the dirt ma uh, map brush. Using the dirt brush, I may make it quite large. Just painting out a couple of these corners here. don't want that much. I'm just doing this to make it look like the uh, corners here have been worn a little bit. When I say worn, just that, uh, that the initial varnish has been taken off the corners a little bit. Could do that along the edge a bit as well. In fact, I'm just going to grab my uh, Wacom pen here to do this as well because it's a small piece of geometry and it's a bit fiddly. Uh, and I, I want the uh, the advantage of the pressure sensitivity that the Wacom gives me. Using the mouse here is really not um, not great. It's not fine enough to do these small edges. I'm just scratching them up a bit to make them look a bit old and worn.
I'm going to use my mouse here though. I just want to um, I'm just painting over that uh, scratch we see here in the foreground. And I'm doing that because I don't want, I'm going to be reusing this piece of uh, geometry quite a bit. I don't want anything that's going to show up as too much of a repeating pattern. I'm painting out that scratch mark through the front because that's really going to show up way too much as being repeated otherwise. I'm, I'm just removing it by using a white uh, brush on a white alpha map instead of a black brush on a white alpha map just to paint out those scratch marks a bit more. I'm just going to soften the ones up I made on the edge as well. That should be fine. We're not going to be getting that close to it, but I just wanted to avoid any any marks on it that will be noticeable when that's repeated quite a bit, when we start instancing that piece of geometry in um, Max or copying it around. Uh, let's save this. What were we calling this? Um, we'll call it Deco Corner. <laughs> Damn you. Deco corner. All right. Uh, let's uh, export our texture map there, and I'm going to export it uh, not as 2048 here. 512 will be fine. It's a very small piece of uh, geometry. Um, I'm just going to make sure I put it in the right spot. Reaper projects, models, Art Deco building. Exports. Uh, main stairway. Panels. Again, I'm going to create a new subfolder called Corners. And we'll put it in there. Export. Okay, let's jump back into Max. Let's uh, load up that texture. Corners, this one here. And let's assign it to that model. Okay, let's get these positioned now, I think. At least start to get them positioned so that uh, when I come back next week, we can bring it into Unreal. Something else selected there that I didn't realize. Where is it? <laughs> I've lost it. Where did I put it? Okay, there it is. Let's just pull it out so I don't lose it again. I'm going to select our frame and our bottom of our step and just uh, go into um, isolation mode again. That way I won't accidentally lose it. All right, let's jump into our front viewport here. Let's scale this back. going to rotate it. I'm 
Let's work on the middle here, I think. back into this viewport. I'm just deciding whether I want to make it bigger or not, but we'll see how we go with this one. I'm just going to shift drag a copy and do a mirror. We will shift drag a copy again. And uh, again, we're going to mirror it. wrong way. Oh. Won't actually let me do a mirror like that, that's okay. We can do it this way. I'm going to shift drag this one. And we'll shift drag this one. Hey. And we'll do a mirror again. And now I have to decide how big I want to make these. Um, 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 um. Hmm. Oi. Thank you. <laughs> no, I, I'm actually going to probably leave it here, guys. I want to look at this over the weekend to decide what pattern I want to put through here. And what I'm going to do is repeat that pattern in each uh, panel. But we will leave it there for now, I think. Um, I want to thank you guys for hanging out with me and for watching. Thank you, Sniper Record, for popping into chat. Uh, I hope you guys have a good weekend. Um, I'll be back on Monday next week. So that's Monday at 5 p.m. Uh, US Pacific time. My schedule does not change. It's always every Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday at 5 p.m. Pacific time. Uh, I do always post 15 minutes to my Twitter page before I go live. So if you're not sure, um, follow. you can keep an eye on my Twitter page at PhilDoes3D and uh, you'll see when I'm live then. Um, but like I said, I'll be back on at 5 p.m. on Monday next week. Again, thanks uh, Sniper Echo for popping in and saying hello. Um, uh, we'll be back on, on 5 p.m. Uh, 5 p.m. Uh, next Monday, on Monday next week. So you guys have a good weekend and um, yeah, hopefully I'll see you guys next week. And again, thanks guys for hanging out and for watching and thank you Sniper Echo. You have a great weekend as well, buddy. Um, I, all you guys have a great weekend and uh, I will hopefully see you on Monday next week. See you guys.